Before we start this crazy, mind-blowing video, I want to give a spoiler heads up for those of you who have not yet finished the main quest line in Starfield, or have not gone on to a new game plus yet. If you like lore videos and gaming content, definitely subscribe to the channel, and if you want to know everything there is to know about Starfield, definitely check out StarfieldWiki.net run by the team behind UESP. There are many things to discuss as we spacefarers explore the knowns and unknowns of the settled systems. Perhaps one of the most obvious ones to discuss are the starborn, former or enhanced human beings who have gone through what we know to be a or the center of the old entire multiverse that is referred to as the unity. One of these starborn has caught my attention in particular. To me, the most interesting individual among these starborn is one who is referred to as the Pilgrim in our original universe. The mythology and lore surrounding the Pilgrim and the implications of the things he's done and said make him probably one of my favorite characters in the entire game. The Pilgrim is at first glance simply a background character who has helped pave the way for us spacefarers, providing clues for any other potential starborn to follow in his footsteps, but things get a little overwhelming with the mythos of the Pilgrim once we consider the existence of the multiverse, parallel universes, and the concept of infinite non-linear time. We first realize that this individual may have existed once the original hunter we encounter mentioned the word unity, which sparks our quest to discover the meaning of what that word exactly is. This leads us to inquiring about the unity with Keeper Aquilus based on Mateo's recollection of the word being used by him. Keeper Aquilus is a leader of the Sanctum Universum, a somewhat relatively recent religious organization in the Southern Systems which believes that God, or whatever we humans conceptualize as God, is somewhere out there in the universe waiting for us to reach it. This belief to me is presented as a interesting blend between the various mystic and deistic definitions of God in religious history. The act of graph drive jumping to achieve spiritual awakening, the act of exploring the lack of a conduit between you and whatever God is out there, along with the aloofness of such a force or being somewhere out there in the universe truly exemplifies some of those definitions. I feel like we can save this for a different lore video. After we talked to the Keeper, we learned that an individual circa 22nd century, based on the Starfield timeline and before the formal founding of the Sanctum Universum, approached the leaders of what we now know as the Atheistic Enlightened and House Varun. According to the Keeper, the Pilgrim claimed that they found the true meaning of unity and gave parts of that truth to said leaders. The Pilgrim let it be known that he would contemplate his infinitum addendum until his death, which turns out to be code for the star system of Endum. A New Atlantis chapter leader of the Enlightened, Andy Singh, speaks to us of a story where someone called the Drifter repeatedly approached the first House of Enlightenment with the same question. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? The answer of two is code for the second planet in the Indom system. Lastly, we talk to a House Varun zealot, Mirza, who talks of her religion's founder, Jinan Varun, fighting who she refers to as the Unbeliever, four different times for over 120 rotations of the planet that they are fighting on. The numbers are code for the coordinates of the Pilgrim's resting place on the second planet in the Indom system. This legendary duel where Janan Varun apparently kills the Unbeliever or the Pilgrim multiple times is more than likely a reference to the Starborn ability to duplicate themselves. Although the story states Janan kills the Pilgrim, it's unclear if it was simply yet another Starborn duplicate they killed or religious embellishment of the tale which we'll discuss later. With the clues gathered, we venture to Indom 2, and using the numbered coordinates, find a habitat previously occupied by the Pilgrim. Here, we can find scattered writings made by this enigmatic individual. Their first writing says, The credulous simplicity of mundane humans never ceases to amaze me. My worst instincts, the evil spirit, draw me towards a form of contempt for them. I remember that I am privy to that which they are not. I cannot and should not judge them for a lack of vision when I know very well the blinders which obscure their sight. 
I once wore them myself, after all. I hope for their sake that they may someday understand. But for my sake, I wish to be left alone. Here we have the pilgrim bemoaning humans as being way too ready to believe in anything, perhaps speaking to a nature of many humans too eager in attaching themselves to some sort of meaning in their lives, spiritual or otherwise. The pilgrim has a clear distaste for humanity, speaking as if he was not one of us, despite the clear evidence of human comforts surrounding us as we read their writings. This is the first clue in the writings that the pilgrim considers himself something more than human, as is in fact starborn. The pilgrim refers to his worst instincts or attitude of being readily distasteful of others as an evil spirit, not that he has a literal evil spirit controlling him. He admonishes himself, writing that he too was like the mundane humans, that he hopes they find their unity as he did, but that he wished to be left alone. Here, it's implied that his abilities or appearance amazed the people of the settled systems, and they treated them as if he were something very special or divine. In the second writing, the pilgrim writes, "So here is the crux of my troubles. To accomplish anything, I need to work with other people. I need assistance. I need workers." I mean, hands. As we work together, they inevitably ask questions, and I can never help talking. It starts innocently enough. They want to understand how someone who believes in science can also believe in the divine, or they have their own misunderstanding instilled by some borderline religious remnant. My weakness is my inability to let alone. I want them to understand, so I try, gently as I might, to nudge their minds along the right path. Then there are follow-ups and followings. The trouble is, I genuinely care for these people. It would be so much easier if I didn't. This piece of writing can be read in two different ways, which is awesome to me. The first is take it quite literally. Here we have the pilgrim wanting to perhaps grow crops or do other menial tasks, but that he needs others to do it as much as he may not like the idea of that. He again disapproves of the childlike or misguided questions his followers ask of him, reminiscent of how mystics, religious figures, and other mythological beings chided their followers in our own human mythos. This frames the pilgrim in this fascinating historical and religious context as some sort of leader that seemed larger than life to their followers, but historically and self-admittedly was simply just another human being. The second way of interpreting this text is reading it as a Starfield player. To me, it feels like the pilgrim is us. Maybe they were us, or rather, a different version of us from an entirely different universe. Their talk of needing workers might refer to the outpost system in Starfield. Their mention of being asked questions, influencing others, and how the pilgrim feels that they are almost compelled to talk might be a reference to how we, the player, must go through the course of the game with dialogue. The follow-ups may be interpreted as a quest chain, and the followings, of course, refer to the companion system. The third piece of writing goes on to say, "Today, in a soft voice, my assistant asked me if there was anything above the unity. It was all I could do to keep from shouting that I could scarcely comprehend the misunderstanding that would lead to such a question. It was asked honestly and answered as best as I could." But if even my closest confidant here can fail to grasp the most basic of these truths, why am I bothering to explain it, any of it to any of them? Every word that drops from my mouth gets gobbled up, misheard, misremembered, misunderstood, and mistranslated before I can issue the slightest clarification. People are necessary, but people are madness. I attempted to withdraw, to go off alone, to commune with unity in my own way. They followed. Of course, they followed. It's clear at this point that the pilgrim, try as he might, cannot get their teachings across to their followers, and is giving up. Certainly, if we were to pluck various figures or visionaries from human history and plop them into our time, I'm sure many of them would be aghast at the misinterpretations of their beliefs or works modern humans believe in. The pilgrim at this point is simply living that in the moment and wants to get away from his following. To go into isolated meditation, although it seems they attempted to follow him no matter what. The fourth piece of writing continues the pilgrim's story. At last, a bit of peace, a piece of peace. Is that anything? Is that funny? Why am I trying to be funny? Have they driven me mad at last? Is there a difference between writing to myself and talking to myself? The former certainly seems more acceptable than the latter. 
I recall again that my mind is my own, and that even if only it exists, that is sufficient for me to believe in everything else. The unity has restored me once more. This time, I act alone. For now. Myself is a formidable opponent. I should have expected as much, but vanity is, thankfully, not among my vices. Regardless, it turns out time spent in solitude is, in my case, time with a very sick man. Or whatever it is I've become. I don't like this person. From this piece of writing, we can conclude that the pilgrim didn't just run away from his followers to a different planet, but he went through the unity again to an entirely different universe so he could find solitary peace. It's interesting that unlike the hunter or even the spacefarers, the pilgrim went through the unity to not gain more power, whether it's a better suit or ship or starborn ability, but simply to be left alone. The pilgrim determines that it's best he lives a life of solitude and starts over. While he talks of spending time with himself as time with a very sick man, we can interpret this as him saying sick men mentally or not his usual self since the unity seems to enhance and heal you physically while granting you longer longevity. This writing is also a big change from his initial writing where he is disdainful of mundane human beings to this more philosophical thinking. The fifth piece of writing we can read states, I find myself thinking about his various pasts and my possible futures. I imagine continuing on the road, acquiring more power, more knowledge, more development of myself. I imagine passing through once more to another world to begin the process anew. What is notable here? That road does seem gratifying. Every step is one of intrinsic reward, and I feel myself anticipating the pleasures and seeing a more contented version of myself in that future. Then, for the sake of considering all possibilities, I imagine if I took a different path, if I stopped running, stopped seeking to gather my own power, if I instead embraced the twinges of compassion I feel in my heart, and let myself care for the people who seem to gather about me whenever I try to work, if I simply lived and taught and perhaps brought others to the light and died. The road also seems gratifying. I also see a contented version of myself in that future. Here's a difference though, when I stop thinking about the glories I could achieve for myself, the pleasure fades nearly immediately. When I stop thinking about staying and building something, the feeling endures. There is something more sustaining about it, more fulfilling. I don't know what this difference signifies, but I am grateful for the time I've taken to notice it. The sixth and last writing by the pilgrim concludes, I don't know what the correct answer is. I might never. Increasingly, though, I am comfortable with not knowing. The more I reflect on being here in this world in this time, the more I think it is precisely where I need to be. This time will be different. It won't be about me, so I won't have to run. I can actually build something with intent instead of scrambling to fix something that others create in my name. It can be something beneficial. I can be something beneficial. I'm leaving behind that other person. This world has no place for him. Let him die. Let me live to enlighten the blessed universe before me. You have found the end of my journey, but to know everything, you must find its beginning. On Hyla 2, the island hides a scorpion, and the scorpion sting hides the truth. In these last two writings by the pilgrim, we sense that the pilgrim has come to realize that going through the unity again and again until the end of time, while growing more powerful may not be the answer to the happiness he's been meditating on all this time. He now believes that he'd be happier about staying permanently in one universe and building it and its people up. This is a really, really cool thing to read as a lot of the writings we see with the pilgrim lore seem to take some influence from Buddhism, in particular, the concept of bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas are generally regarded in most variations of Buddhism as individuals who are extremely close to being enlightened or awakened, for the lack of a better term in English. They are individuals who journey towards their awakening and who have realized their path to it. Specifically, in Mahayana Buddhism, it's believed that you can achieve awakening not over multiple lives, but in a singular lifetime. Within this school of Buddhism, bodhisattvas are also individuals who consciously choose to delay their own awakening and relief from suffering so they can help others achieve enlightenment by remaining behind on purpose. They subject themselves to this self-sacrifice by being reborn again and again for what is essentially an impossible task. This is basically what the pilgrim has done at this point, at least 
philosophically, they can move on through the actual center of the multiverse to ascend ever higher. They can climb their way to the zenith of what they could be without regard for others and become an incredibly powerful being that many would indeed call a god. However, the pilgrim decides he will remain behind in this final universe that they have chosen for the sake of others, becoming a sort of bodhisattva. So now we have a big question to answer. Who is or was the pilgrim? This is where things will get extremely chaotic, so bear with me here. The first interpretation of who the pilgrim is will be that it's Keeper Aquilus, based on the following clues. The writings of Keeper Aquilus strongly resemble the writings of the pilgrim once you read the books he's written. The Keeper tries to explain the concepts of existence, being, divinity, and more in his books, such as Among the Grav Jumps, Sanctum Universums, Volume 1 and 2, and he even mentions unity as a sentient point of ascension, even speculating on what the unity's role is within the universe in Greater End Volume 3. The Keeper even writes that the unity emanates messengers to aid us in our trajectory. These emanations appear to us in forms that we can understand, as corporeal beings that are like us, but unlike us. These are our guides. Should this book set your heart on fire, seek those born of the stars, for they are themselves lights in the void. The pilgrim's writings of how he has his uncanny ability to draw in people to teach them are also strong evidence of the Keeper being the Pilgrim, as the Keeper is literally drawing in people for the Sanctum Universum and teaching them. We're also sort of clued in that the Pilgrim is actually still alive, because when we get to the Scorpion Clue, there are otherwise territorial alien creatures waiting in a sort of procession without attacking us as we approach. It's clear that they are being affected by the Starborn ability of mind control, and thus far it doesn't seem like the Starborn powers are that potent or even linger after they die, meaning Keeper Aquilius is still maintaining that power somehow. The Hunter is also another clue and is a version of Keeper Aquilius, who did not become the Pilgrim, but rather continued on the path of attaining power as the Hunter, which is why he wants you to kill the Pilgrim if you side with him against the Emissary, as he sees the Keeper or Pilgrim as a weaker version of himself who was too weak to continue going through the unity ad infinitum. Lastly, if you talk to Keeper Aquilus in one of the many universes you can visit as a Starborn, he outright confesses that he is a Starborn. So, you found your truth, did you? I hope my counterpart in your universe gave you the advice you needed. There are certain revelations that are best kept until people are ready, don't you think? Perhaps it would be best if we assumed that we're just two ordinary people meeting for the first time. Believe me, I've seen many ways this can play out. Go, Starborn. I hope you continue to enjoy your place in this little multiverse of ours. Now, some of this gets a little weird when we take into consideration a version of ourselves in the first New Game Plus apparently just disappeared, implying they died. So it could totally be that our original universe's keeper is actually not either the pilgrim or the original keeper of that universe. It could very well be that maybe the original keeper of our universe went on to become starborn or died, and that the keeper we talk to is the pilgrim from a different universe as well. And that of course means the hunter is a different keeper from an entirely different universe the pilgrim is not from. This also goes for us players as well once we discover in other new game pluses that there are not only alternative versions of us, but basically a Rick and Morty twist on everything and everyone else. An alternative interpretation we can go with of the Pilgrim's identity is that the Pilgrim could also be meta-commentary on the player as a Starborn. So technically the Pilgrim based on the second writing could be us the player, or really anyone else in the infinite expanse of the universe, which makes it so that in my opinion, it ultimately does not matter who the Pilgrim is, was, or will be, because basically all these conclusions we've drawn so far about who the Pilgrim is or was do not actually contradict each other. The Hunter, the Emissary, and everything else can both be a constant and not a constant in any particular universe at any point in time. The Hunter and Emissary even remark that our original universe as players is the first they've seen where we don't die 
But you have to take note that they are not omnipotent or omniscient gods. They are simply humans who have ascended to being starborn. They themselves had not seen all realities or universes, so it was a matter of time after going through three or four thousand universes, they'd finally run to a universe or probability where you didn't die, which contrary to the hunter's belief, does not make you or the universe you're in necessarily unique. At this point, it's cool to point out how the Bethesda writers bring up not just traveling, but how actual perception of time intertwines with age, playing into the hunter's recognition of what he considers to be anomaly. He even says that things start to all blend together at a certain point, considering he was born on Earth. Everyone can be everyone, and everything can be different at the same time, on what we assume to be a non-linear concept of time. This is how the Pilgrim knows where the hunter and emissary are meeting, but also explains how old the pilgrim or the other starborn are, which doesn't mean time travel. It could just mean that the starborn live indefinitely in terms of age, but if they became starborn after the player character died or relatively close to before the start of the game, it may mean we need to think of Unity as someone not just opening up a door, uh, opening up to a random universe, but also a door that can open up on a different plot of that universe's timeline. The points at which the Keeper, or whoever the Pilgrim is, can also diverge at multiple points on various timelines in all parallel universes, provided all those universes even have the same timeline, and this is even considering the fact that the multiverse isn't entirely made up of parallel universes, because Starfield is basically saying that there's universes where the settled systems never became a thing, and that humanity reached the stars at a later point, or never even reached the stars at all. All of this can be possible at the exact same time. I know it might be super overwhelming or confusing, but if you want to keep it simple, the Unity even says, You stand now at the very center of space and time. Center being the best word to grant you understanding, but still not entirely accurate. The Unity is what was, what is, and what shall be. It is nowhere and everywhere. Nothing and everything. It is the unity. Any other meaning is entirely up to you. All of you. And it only exists. Judging it makes no difference. I am as much you as you are part of everything. All points connect to here. When a star is born or dies, its existence beats through the heart of this place. The unity. I have seen all you are, have been, and could be. We can conclude that everything that has happened, or would have happened, or didn't happen, did happen, or will never happen. Existence is literally infinite in all of its innumerable variations, and the unity is just assumingly at the center of all this in quiet observance, because it simply is being, as alluded to by the Keeper's writings. If the player, the Keeper, or a Starborn is the Pilgrim, they have gone through their first several New Game Plus instances. We've done everything possible. We've built outposts, we've killed millions of pirates, we've gained greater powers, we've married and divorced countless times, we became rich, we've had children perhaps, and all the things we'd want to do, we've done. Once we make the choice of continuing through the Unity as ourselves, the Pilgrim the emissary or the hunter or permanently staying in the universe at that or really any point where choices involved creates different universe instances and timelines which consequently means infinite and different versions of ourselves and others i know i had a lot of fun discussing this with all of you and finally putting it into video form i hope that you enjoyed the video i know things probably got weird or overwhelming at certain points so let me know if you'd like to discuss more down in the comments below Thank you so much for watching. I've been having a lot of fun exploring the lore of Starfield and the Pilgrim, and what the lore surrounding the Pilgrim means was one hell of a joyride. Until next time, I'll see you all out in the Starfield.